This episode is proudly sponsored by Martha Mock and Super Confident Coaching, superconfidentcoaching.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Business Monday. It is such an important day for us women who are entrepreneur or wanting their own business, or you're just starting out that you want some support in your business area. Hey, let's be real. We do need our business to go well so it doesn't become a charity or just a hobby. We do all have bills to pay. We do need to make a living for ourselves. And a lot of the time when we're talking about sales, we immediately thinking about the old car salesman that people have to shoot things onto your phone and it makes it so scary. So today I have an expert for you here that who are specializing in this area to teach you what is the true meaning of sales, collaboration, and being the person that you are meant to be. So today I have Amy Honey here. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for coming on to our show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm just, you know, I have a big affinity for Australia and an even bigger affinity for women and helping women. So I love it. I love your group. It, it's so lovely to have you. Please tell us a little bit more about what you do. So I'm a sales trainer and for large corporations and for, for seminar companies, usually speakers and authors and coaches and things like that. Um, but my training is slightly different because what I train in is specifically uh, the neuroscience and psychology of sales and then the flow of human behavior. That is so cool because when I was talking to you before, you said that you study the same training as the FBI. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much, the, it's a, called neuro, Neurocognitive Intelligence, and the guy that teaches it, he is the, he wrote the exams for the FBI, yeah. That is so cool, like, who thinks sale could be, like, linking to all of this brain function, but it is true, isn't it? When we are buying something, it is an emotional thought more than a logical thought, is that correct? Yeah. And, and the really cool thing, like about my group of people is we have literally like law enforcement in there. We've got salespeople and we have therapists, counselors, because mm. it's actually all the same skill set, but we mm. don't think about it. But the reality is we've got three it, neuroscience. We've got three brains in our head. We have the lizard brain, which is like the closest to the base of the spine. And that's our automated responses. The things that we automatically do like breathing, um, or, or like things that would be automated. Like if, if something was to fall and make a really loud sound in your house, based on your survival, your ancestors would have given that thing focus quickly. Like you would just turn super fast and we have no, um, we have no, like we have no control over it. Like it would just be an instant reaction. Right. So those mm. happen in the lizard brain in the, in the nearest the spine. Then we've got our mammalian brain, which is like the midbrain also called, or uh, called the midbrain, the mammalian brain. It's literally the brain of a dog. Okay. Like it's the exact same brain that a dog would have or a monkey. I mean, we're kind of apes, you know, yep. and then we've got the neocortex, which is the, the, the brain that the gray matter that kind of hangs over here. But the reality is, is that the other two brains do not speak in words. The neocortex is the only one that has words. So when we buy something and when we make all of our decisions, we think we're making it by the neocortex. We think we're like analyzing it and we just have information and then we've made a decision. But that's not true at all. All of our decisions are created in the midbrain, in that brain that's literally the same brain as a dog. Oh, wow. That is good to know. <laughs> and that's where the emotions lie too. Mm. So like when you feel any of those emotions, anger, love, anything, it's all done in the midbrain and then we justify it logically. So we think we're coming up with it logically and when our reality we're not. And so like, that's the thing that most people sell to the neocortex, yes. but what you really need to sell to is the midbrain. That is such a beautiful and different way of looking at things because we always find that like, it is so true. Like in our days, we have seen a little bit of people and we can smell it when they just are so 
pressure. Like there's just so much pressure from them. And you feel like that, oh my God, I don't want to talk to them because of that. So how do we take the pressure out and just focus on the profit and the flow? I love that you asked that. So <laughs> like I said, it's no pressure, just profit, no force, just flow is kind of my tagline. Mm -hmm. um, because the pressure sales never feels good. It doesn't feel good yes. to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so I think where a lot of people um, it's like, it's like, they feel like they have to make this shift. Like it was even, we went to go see these comedians the other night and every single comedian, like they have the number one thing that makes it the easiest to sell. Humor is the number one way to influence another human is by humor, like funny, being funny. And I'll tell you why in a minute. It's pretty cute. Um, but we went there and they literally, they like did their whole show. And then they, it was like, they shifted gears to sell their t-shirts. It was like, like they were like being funny, being funny, being personal, love them. And then all of a sudden they're like, buy my shirt. And it was really like this shift of like, now I have to sell this thing. And when we talk to them, they go, yeah, we feel so dirty. We hate doing it. None of us like doing it. None of us like to sell our stuff. And so I had this conversation with them. And so if we were to shift gears a little bit, and instead of when we go into a call, mm -hmm. instead of thinking, I need to sell this person or I need to sell this person my service, most of you, I am assuming that you sell your services or your products because you believe that they can really help somebody else, right? Most of us have something, we have a problem we can solve, or we have a product that we think is really going to help the other person. So if you get on that call with no agenda to sell them, not don't don't get on the call with that agenda. Get on the call with the intention to make a genuine connection with the other person and figure out where they need help and then actually help that person on that call. And then if it's a match, maybe you're going to pitch them. I don't pitch everybody on a call. Mm -hmm. I find out if they're the right match first. I help mm -hmm. that person. My intention is to help them. Because here's the thing, if we get on the, atten it's like, there's a big difference between me getting on a call with you and asking you for something mm. to me getting on a call with you to give you something. Yes. Right. Yes. And so when you shift your perspective to, I'm going to get on this call to serve, I'm going to get on this call to help. I have something to give and I don't even have anything to sell you because I don't know yet if you're the right person or not. So yes. I have nothing to sell you until I've helped you. Oh, that is so true. And that takes a lot of pressure off us as well, because I think that in our uh, webtile brain, that immediately when we hear some of the work like MLM, uh, some of the work affiliate marketing, and then when we hear, oh, we have to sell these things, immediately our web power thing is like no 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 i don't want to be one of those and that stopped us from understanding why that business was created a business is created because there's a need there's somewhere a gap that to be filled that's why businesses are created and since they are a business already that creating a need do you, do a lot of us actually realize that it is us that are stopping the flow. And that is actually coming from past, isn't it? Yeah. And that's a good point. Like a lot of us, like, like if we believe that we have to become a pushy sales person in order to make sales, we're not going to make mm. sales. Yes. But the reality is that the sales are the lifeblood of your business. And without sales, your, your, your sales are going to die and your business is going to die. So, and what I see a lot of people do is they, they spend a lot of time doing the fun stuff, mm -hmm. meaning like they're getting their website pretty and they're like taking care of, like they're getting the next certification. Well, that's the fun mm -hmm. stuff. That's the stuff we want to do. Sales isn't, we didn't get into business to become salespeople or marketers. We yeah. got into business because we wanted to help somebody or we had a problem that we wanted to solve for mm -hmm. people. Right. But without the sales you, and you're doing all these other things like that you like to do and you enjoy to do and you think, oh, I got to get a website. Yeah, but you're going to be the world's best kept secret. And so I, I, I call that the equivalent of rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, so without the sales, the sales is the key mm -hmm. and you have to get good at it. Unfortunately, that's the reality. If you're going to be in business, you have to get good at sales. Or mm. hire people that are good at sales, but oh, you have to have a good, you have to have a good sales 
team or get good at it yourself. One of the two, because without it, your business is going to absolutely die. Yeah, it would. That's when a lot I say to a lot of people that become a charity or a hobby, it doesn't become a business. A business does not cannot be called a business without making money. It is just a passion project that you enjoy doing, but it's not bringing you income, which that's not nice. So I wanted to ask you, how do we sell it better? How do we do it better? It's like, I wanted to learn to sell like a girl, like a woman, like a high value person, instead of an old car salesman. How should we do that? Please give us some tips. Excellent. I love it. I say sell like a girl because you know what? Women, we already are so good at sales. Like most of us have kids and those green veggies didn't sell themselves. You guys sold those veggies, right? To that kid. Like the the, the idea of sales doesn't necessarily end in the exchange of money mm-hmm. because either I'm selling you and I, I'm selling you my, my idea right now. I'm selling you my concept yeah. of sales right now, mm-hmm. right? So yes. it was it's a new concept and it's one you didn't have, but I'm selling you my idea. So mm. we're always constantly having sales conversations and especially women, because we are very, women are more collaborative, men are more competitive, mm. right? Women are like, women, we actually, we actually thrive through pleasure. Mm. We create through pleasure. If you think about mm. it, men are like, no pain, no gain, push, 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 push. Mm-hmm. Got to make it happen. Make those sales happen. Crush that sales, right? But women, we don't thrive like that. Mm-hmm. We don't thrive in competition. We don't thrive in that pushy thing. We mm-hmm. thrive through pleasure. And if you think about the our ability to create in the world, we can create an entire human. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we did it with pleasure. <laughs> Maybe mm-hmm. not all of us, but hopefully mm-hmm. it was fun. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. Right. But that's how we create. And that's all our creativity is in our core here. This is the chakras down, you know, down here is where that creativity happens. And so, but the problem with most women is that we are, we feel guilty when we take time for ourselves or pleasure for ourselves, because it's literally in our DNA to take care of other people. That's how our species survived. We were the caregivers. We take care of the kids. We have the more of an ability to take care of our husbands or mm-hmm. our families. You know, we're, we end up being the caregivers and it's naturally innate in us, like literally written in our DNA code. And so we almost feel guilty when we're taking time with ourselves. I know as a busy mom, you have probably eaten more than one meal standing in the kitchen while your mm-hmm. family's sitting at the table and you're still doing dishes and cleaning stuff up because because it's just in our nature. But at the same time, if we could put the oxygen mask on ourselves first and bring in even five minutes of pleasure a day, I don't care what that is. If it's chewing gum in the corner for five minutes a day, do it. I recommend dancing. Dancing is an awesome way to bring in some pleasure because it is really impossible to be in a bad mood when you're in your kitchen, you know, with your favorite song blast and shaking your your dairy yeah. air, right? So, so bringing in that pleasure in more and we're not going to do the things we don't like. So if, if we feel like we have to be pushy, we're not going to be looking forward to any phone call or sales conversation. Yes. Me, I love sales conversations because I flipped it around. I can't wait to connect with people. I can't Mm -hmm. wait to get to know them. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so great getting on the call with you. You know, it's like, I knew I have a new friend in Australia. That's, that's just an a powerhouse of an amazing woman. And that's like, to me, connection and relationship is everything. And so if you can start focusing on building those connections and those relationships, you're going to start looking forward to those sales calls. Yes. Yeah. What? And that's how we do it like a girl. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's that's that is really cool. So, what are some of the tips that you can give us, like, uh, like when we're going on to a sales call, like, what is the three things that we should prepare when we're actually before we went onto the call to get our mind thinking like a girl, not like a a masculine man that having that masculine energy comes out. Focus on serving. Focus on how you can help this person. Go, I'll, I'll go take a look at someone's social media before I get on a call and just kind of see where they're at. Like, mm. where are they at, right? And then when I get on that call, I'm like really focused on connection. So I have a three-step process in any call. You have to connect first. 
The connection mm-hmm. is so important. If you don't make that connection initially, you've lost you've lost the sale already. Uh-huh. Then the next step is coaching. So uh-huh. once you've made the connection, get permission to coach them and give mm-hmm. them good help. Help them figure out some way that you can help them on this call. It can be a takeaway that they can do, you know, on their own, mm-hmm. you know, um, we don't necessarily have to give them everything. It's going to be, of course, faster if they work with you yeah. or the salute, the problem will be solved better or easier or faster or whatever if they work with you. But tell them what they can do. Give mm-hmm. them some help. Mm-hmm. You know, give them good help. Always ask for permission, though. Make sure you have their permission to coach them. It's like you don't want to just go in and just coaching. Then it just becomes an intrusion, right? It's similar to like getting a DM, like for a weight loss company of like yeah. uh, someone you haven't talked to in four years. And all of a sudden they're like, Hey, here's this weight loss thing. And you're like, are you calling me fat? Like, I don't, yeah. what, like what are, you didn't make any connection or ask to coach me about yeah. this yet or find yeah. out what I want. Yeah. Right. So that's a really key piece. And then when you've done those two things and you've actually helped them, then you can close. So it's connect, coach, close. Those are the three steps. Uh-huh. And if you feel awkward going into the closing, I've got other ways to do that, but it's a longer conversation for sure. But uh, you can definitely move it towards a closing conversation at that point after you've helped them. You have to help them first, though. That is true. That is so true. Um, so what do you mean when like we hear people say all the time, OK, uh, it shouldn't be a, com- a competition. It's not about killing every single bakery in your suburb. And so your bakery will become the best. Um, I have a lot of people coming into me and say, oh, but there's so many of us out there. I said, yes. So how many bakery did you see on the street? How many cafe have you seen on down that wall there? And if they are all actually surviving, there must be something in there. And I recently learned a word called collaboration. So in your view, in your explanation, what does that mean by about no competition, but more collaboration? So if we both own bakeries, then we Mm. both have the same target market. Mm. Right. And that means that we can do fun stuff together. Mm-hmm. You know, we can collaborate. Maybe we can go, Hey, if you uh, bring me your receipt from, from Martha's bakery and I'll give you a 10% discount. Mm. Right. That's collaboration instead of competition. Mm. And the uh-huh. thing is, is your competition isn't the other bakeries or the other people in your field. Uh-huh. Your real competition is your client's focus. Because focus is currency and there's a lot of loud stuff in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. So your real competition is not the other competitors in your market. Your real competition is your client's focus. It's the fight they just had with their husband. It's their dog that just passed away. That's your real competition because you're competing for focus. Oh, that is so good. That just completely clear my mind because I, I ha- I'm i dare to say that 90% of us are thinking of competition, the next bakery, the next hairdresser, the next coaches or consultant outside. But you just open up my mind that to say it's actually the customer focus that we're actually competing on. Please tell us more about that. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, so like I, I try to collaborate with everybody. It's like, like this is a collaboration, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like we're collaborating right now. Um, I collaborate on my social medias. If I can get into somebody else's content and they can get into my content content. And you can also collaborate with people that maybe, maybe, um, the bakery has the same target market of Mm -hmm. the other bakeries, but maybe the bakery also has the same target market as the other fast food restaurant, right? So how can you collaborate with the other fast food restaurants and how can you collaborate with other people that might be, you know, in your field? Like maybe you want, maybe you have a bakery, maybe you want to collaborate with a dentist. Hey, Mm -hmm. after you've been eating these sweets, you better go see this dentist, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, who's, who's in your target market? Like, what does your target, what else does your target market buy? Mm -hmm. Right. Besides just your thing. Right. And how can you get in front of your, your, that, you know, how can you collaborate with other people that maybe aren't even in the same market, same, mm. you know, don't, they don't sell the same thing as you, but they sell to the same target market. Yes. Right. 
And then you start collaborating and you bring in, it brings in teams. I've made some of my best money through collaborations with other companies. Um, you know, like I, I just collaborated with a company that um, they do lead generation mm. and I, I'm horrible at generating leads. I don't know how to get leads at all, but I can sell once you get the person in front of me. Yeah. So they need help with their sales. Right. So now I can collaborate with them. They can help me get leads. I can help them get sales. Mm. Right. So, so what, yeah. So what, how can you, how can you work together instead of like trying to compete against each other what what things can you do what can yes. you offer each other mm. right that is and the so worst, yeah and the worst thing people can do is like like especially when it comes to like network marketing companies yeah you know if someone's in a network marketing company the worst thing you can do is put down the company that they're in because yes. they're married to that company that's yeah. they have a passion for it right yeah so it's like, how can you collaborate and how can you say, well, this product actually helps this other product, mm. right? And they're good together instead mm. of, oh, don't do this one, only do this one. Mm. Does that, that make is sense? So true. Yes, because I was actually trying to collaborate two people that are quite open-minded in the MLM business. And even they're serving with different company, I still want to collaborate them together because I do believe that there's no one solution for everything. They will be always oh. solution from every single company. It's just like, I'm not tied down. Like when I was a makeup artist, I'm still a makeup artist, but when I was in the makeup artist field, I don't get tied down by one brand brand or one product because I do believe that everything come from different places they will have their benefit onto it so that's one of my policy of ensuring that the company that I'm with have no obligation in that law that I have to stay with that brand only that I'm allowed to collaborate with other people just like um, I interview a lot of speakers here I interview a lot of business owner here I want you guys to use my platform to share to share to our 15,000 people in here by like today that we have, and they will, they may be someone that who can use your service. Like you said, we're here to show people what we have, our why, our reasons. We're not here to buy from me, come and buy from me, because that could be the biggest turnoff, okay? <laughs> it is, it yeah. is a turn -off. So know how to actually explain your reasons. See, there's a problem. You're trying to fix it. You're not trying to tell everyone, I sell this in here, right on their face. But if they need help, they can come and reach out to you. One of the things that I really don't like is the unsolicited DM. Like I do get people to actually let me know. I like I never was into it and I know. Um, have that compassion and understanding because that's how a lot of people teach it, okay? Uh, that comes from a very old sales platform. How do you genuinely, you go with your 100 friend, you give them a call and then do all that. I was so shocked when I actually first saw that sales training. I was like, what? I need to trouble my 100 friend to just listen to me? That's just not the yeah. way to go. That's, that's not my vibe. So what are your advice to us that who were told all of this wrong message that in our head, that's the way that sales should be? Here's my best advice around sales. If you don't like it done to you, don't do it to anyone else. Right? If you don't, if it, if it feels wrong when someone does it to you, don't use that tactic because it's going to feel horrible. Like you're not, you don't like it when it's done to you. Why are you doing it? I tell this to companies all the time. Seminar companies are always doing all these like little, because it's the thing is, is that it is old school sales and people, like a lot of the people, especially like in the seminar world. Yeah. Oh, I love this like, color that this makes. It's cute. Yeah, it is um, cool. <laughs> uh, especially in the seminar world, it's like they, here's the other thing. You buy like you sell. Yeah. So a lot of the people that are in the seminar world, they they bought that way and so they sell that way yeah right and i and then they they come in like i come in as a sales team and then they're asking me to do something that i don't like to do and i go no nah. <laughs> and i go i go you don't like it when it's done to you why are you doing this to your clients 
Yeah. That's the experience that your clients are experiencing. Yes. Don't put your clients through something, through an experience that you don't like to experience. Exactly. That is so true. Wow. That is one of our big goal here today. It is a perfect way to wrap up our session because it is so true. Respect others like how you like to be respected. Treat others like how you like to be treated. It can yeah. be that simple. Stop listening to poison. We call it the poison chicken soup. Okay. Stop yeah. listening to all those poison chicken soup and go in with a real expert like Amy here who actually know what they're talking about, who are expert in the field, teaching people all around the world to give you the right advice. And most importantly, you won't feel like an old car salesman anymore. You can finally feel like the queen with your crown straightened and just so of who you are. That is the best thing about it. Amy, thank you so much for your time today. I, I have learned so much and I'd love for you to come back and do another workshop for us later on Knowledge is Power on Thursday. I would love for you to actually come back. Oh, I would love to. I, I would love to. I, I will come and talk to you guys anytime. I love this group. I've been like going through the posts and like you just have some amazing ladies in there and just the openness of these ladies is just, just, you know, they, they pour their heart out and, mm. and even the women that are helping, like they, like they pour their heart out while they're helping. And I just, I love this group. It's such a great group. You guys are amazing. And I love Australia. So <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for loving us. We love you as well. Like I said to Amy, every time I see her, I just see this really gorgeous, beautiful light around her. And she's just like someone that I would love to see every single day and just to lighten up my day. Thank you so much for your contribution, your support, your effort into helping us to become a better person and to be better at running our business. Thank you, Amy, once again. Thank you all our audience and listeners who join us today on Business Monday series. I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Bye. This episode is proudly sponsored by Martha Mock and Super Confident Coaching. Superconfidentcoaching.com.